This is the Specialized Crux Pro, and I think it's brilliant. Yes, it is quite expensive, but this is the first gravel bike that I've ridden that I would happily call my one and only bike. It's been a beach racer, it's fantastic on the road, and it's smashed through one of the wettest cyclocross seasons that I can remember. Now, add in a bunch of fast and sometimes overly adventurous gravel rides, and I'd say that this is a thoroughly capable bike that you should be considering. So, why buy anything else? Let's take a closer look at this thing because there is one potential fly in that lovely, lovely ointment. But before we do, remember to like this video if you enjoy it and subscribe. Let's start with where this bike was designed to be ridden. Rides on the open gravel roads of like Salisbury Plain showed the Crux Pro to be a super speedy racer, packing enough stability for the area's fast gravel descents. Standard builds come with 38 millimeter Pathfinder Pro tires. I set these up tubeless on the Rovolterra CL wheels without any real issues. And the result is a fast rolling package which suits dry conditions and kind of finer gravel. If your gravel looks like this and chunkier, I'd recommend using more of the Crux tire clearance. There's space for 47 millimeter tires on 700C wheels in here. And if you prefer 650B wheels, you can fit a 2.1 inch tire. What you fit is entirely dependent on your local conditions and terrain. Sometimes I treat myself to those soles replaying rides, but my usual trails are much more rugged and wider tires with extra shoulder tread would have been more suitable. The near slick Pathfinder tread is also quickly out of its depth in the mud. So I'd be looking towards something like Challenge's new ground the Schwalbe G1 Bite, or Vittoria's Terreno Wet. The weight is a defining factor of how this thing rides. My size 54 Pro model with the kind of stock build is under eight kilos, which is brilliant for a mid-level build. And it showed itself constantly on my rides. Naturally, low weight helps when climbing. The Mendip and Cotswold Hills, where I usually ride are, as you might have guessed, quite hilly. The Crux is fantastic here, feeling as nippy as my legs and lungs would allow. Punchy acceleration from a slow speed is also helped by the low weight, and this feels great on technical climbs. A lowest gear of 40 by 44 teeth and the low weight combined here, and I certainly felt like a technically better climber than I maybe am. As is the case with most of my gravel rides, I do like to come away from them feeling like a little bit more of a capable bike handler. Road rides can, after all, be a little bit dull in that regard. In my eyes, this is one of the best gravel bikes for faster riding and smooth trails. But what about when you transition from the rough stuff to the smooth? Well, the lightweight gravel race design makes the Crux an incredibly nice bike to ride on the road too. It doesn't take a genius to put the Crux and the Athos side by side and see that they share some design DNA. As an Athos owner, I was quickly comfortable with the Crux and I found myself choosing it for relaxed weekend road rides. I mean, it's fast too. With the long and low geometry, you're still able to hunker down in an aero riding position if that's what you want to do. Really, the only thing holding you back from doing super fast road rides on a Crux are the stock gravel tires, which are fine, but just a little wide for speedy road rides. And then there's the gearing. The 40 by 10 biggest gear is equivalent to about a 5213, which is plenty big enough for the majority of road rides. At 100 RPM with these tires, that's about 52.6 kilometers per hour. On maybe like the two occasions that I wanted to pedal down a gentle hill, yes, I did feel a little lacking in the gear department, but otherwise the gearing was fine. For pure road rides, yeah, it would be nicer to have a closer cassette range and a larger chain ring. The closer cassette means smaller gaps in the gears, which gives you smaller cadence changes, and the bigger chain ring, well, that just feels nicer to me. But as a compromise between road and gravel riding, the SRAM Force Access 1x group set was fine. I know it's a bit cliche, but having the ability to just dart down a bridle path or hop onto a byway brought a new dimension to my usual road spins. For a recreational rider, I'd seriously recommend considering the Crux Pro. 
While the Crux is now officially a gravel bike, my start in cycling took place while this was still a cyclocross machine. Fast forward to today and I believe the current Crux, in fact I'd extend this to include the majority of go faster gravel bikes, are much better cross bikes for the have -a racers like myself. While your legs might grow weary, nothing towards the end of a race slows you down more than wheels that won't turn. The Crux's clearance for 47 mm tyres means that there's just plenty of space around the average 35 mm cyclocross tyre. If you are racing at a level where the tyre width is limited by the UCI's 33 mm regulation, the benefit is even greater. This has allowed me to turn up to even the muddiest cyclocross races and finish without the aid of a spare bike or a pit crew, and I don't have either of those. Some have suggested the slackening and lengthening of the Crux's geometry, which is better for gravel, is less than ideal for cyclocross, which traditionally required sharper handling. I thought the Crux did brilliantly though, handling modern courses featuring their flowing turns and gnarlier forest sections with absolute ease. If you like to dabble in some winter cyclocross fun, then this is an excellent bike for that job. The one area where I do think that the Crux Pro missed out a little was a bit more at the adventurous end of the gravel spectrum. Here you'll find big rocks and plenty of tree roots and super techy descents as well. This often favours truly gargantuan tyre sizes and some suspension. Now I've been riding the Lauf Segler. Its grit suspension fork is a brilliant bit of kit, showing me just how useful suspension can be on a gravel bike. The Segler's capability off-road showed me what the Crux was lacking. On rougher trails, it just wasn't as calm as the Segler, but then the Crux is a pure race bike, so it can be forgiven. You've also got precisely one extra frame mount on the Crux, so if you want to do some bike packing or just head off on some super long rides, you'll need a bag that straps to the frame. That might matter to you, it might not. Okay, so the bike isn't ideal for super gnarly gravel, but it wasn't designed to be. If you want a bike for that from the Specialized range, look at the Diverge. I completely understand that some people don't get the one bike to do it all thing. You just might be compromising elements of your riding too much. That's fine, you do you. But if you are looking for a single bike to cover road, faster gravel and cyclocross duties, then this is a bloody good option. Okay, so I'm not gonna be a super fast road racer on this thing. The gearing isn't big enough and the tires would slow me down, but I'll happily do a pretty pacey group ride just fine. Likewise, I wouldn't call it the ideal machine for hill climbs, but I'll happily tick off a few local climbs at the weekend. At the other end of the scale, the Crux isn't the best adventure bike. The frame is a bit stiff and the mounting options are limited, but it wasn't really designed to take the place of a hardtail mountain bike, so I can't really criticize it too much there either. So, would I sell my Athos and use this across road and gravel? Well, I think the Crux is perfectly capable of serving me well for both. And as I move away from road racing, it's becoming more and more tempting to do so. I have one issue with this bike, and that is the price. Seven grand is a lot to pay, even if you're getting a versatile machine and this is made worse because there's an exceptional bike available at a much lower price. The Vitus Venon Evo RS Force Access costs just 4,700 quid, which, while still a lot of money, makes it a far more affordable proposition than the Crux. And it's not just good on paper, this thing won our overall Bike of the Year award in 2023 because it excelled on road and gravel. You can get huge 45 mm tires into the frame to make it a very capable gravel machine. Or you could add mud guards thanks to the neatly integrated eyelets. How about that for a winter road bike? It's just a little heavier than the Crux at 7.8 kilos for the medium, but it's still a blast to ride and I would have a hard time choosing between the Venon and the Crux. Van Riesel's gravel GCR will be one to keep an eye on too. We saw it at Sea Otter last year and we were still waiting for it to properly launch, but the claimed weight with a one by SRAM Force ETAP access drivetrain, Reynolds carbon wheels and Hutchinson Touareg tires is 8.3 kg in size medium. The only price we have is $5,699 for a version with fulcrum alloy wheels, but it is one that we really, really want to test as soon as possible. 
Rivals aside, the Crux Pro is the first bike that I'd actually consider buying to cover road and gravel duties. As a standalone gravel bike, it is wicked fast on smoother gravel, and it regularly made me feel like a better rider than I actually am. The fact it will also smash a cyclocross race is just a bonus in my eyes. But do you agree? Is this a bike that you would use for all of those disciplines? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Now, if you like this review, then hit the thumbs up, subscribe for more independent reviews, and why not check out Jack's review of the Canyon Grail? It is right here.